I'm Reverend Michael Weeks. I'm the senior minister here in this congregation in Ashland, Virginia. We're so glad you joined us today. We invite you to participate with us in worship by reading scripture and by sharing in the Lord's Prayer with us and also by taking communion. Uh, if you have time right now, pick up some bread and juice so that you can participate in our service of communion. If you don't have bread and juice, crackers and water will do. We're just so glad that you've come today to be with us uh, on our online worship service. One of the things that we all miss are our friends when we're in quarantine. We miss being together with church friends here in the sanctuary at Slash Church. A friend of mine, Judy Pierce, and a member of our congregation said at our coffee and prayer time on Zoom last week, you know, it was not until now that I realized how much a part of my life my friends really are. You don't realize that until you're not around them for a while. You know, whether you're missing your church friends or your work friends or your school friends, shopping friends, we all are feeling a little lonely right now. Why not pick up the phone text or call someone as you prepare to enter into worship here online. Talk to them. Ask them how they've been doing. All of us were created by a wonderful God for relationships. We are created to be in relationship with God and we are created to be in relationship with one another. So, invite someone to join you in worship today. When the service is over, call each other, talk about it, share your lives with one another and build those close relationships. I would love to talk with everyone who's watching this week. If you're having those feelings of loneliness, if you feel darkness is coming in around you, I want you to know that God is there now to stand with you. And with God's love, that fear does not stand a chance. You know what? Go to the website and email our church and share your prayer requests, www.cc.org. We will stand with you in God's love. Welcome to worship at Slash Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I long When brokenness and pain
Would you pray with me? This is your day, and we shall praise you, O God. This is your day we meet as a family in your presence, wherever we are today. We gather as brothers and sisters in Christ, accepting the responsibility this places upon us to love one another as you have loved us. Help us to reach out in the world during this quarantine with your love so that others might be drawn into your family and accept you as their Savior and Lord. Hear our pledge now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, I'm Ed Hellerman, and welcome again to Slash Church Online. Some announcements first. I know there have been a lot of cancellations due to the quarantine. Instead of talking about things we can't do, let's talk about ways we can connect this week. Newcomers and members can gather and learn more about Slash Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, starting this week. We will talk about the history of disciples and talk about the ministries of Slash every Wednesday night in May in the Zoom room at 7 p.m. Join us each week and all are welcome. You'll find the link in your Sunday worship email or you can call the church and get Zoom information. There are many opportunities to connect through Zoom on the schedule. For instance, if you can make time this week, why not join us for coffee, fellowship, and prayer Monday morning at 10 a.m. We also have dessert and prayer on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Remember to bring your favorite dessert to eat as we talk together. Our youth are meeting every Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. You will find a schedule of our Zoom gatherings on our calendar on the website and in the Sunday morning worship email. Our elders are meeting this week for a regular meeting and also to talk about worship at Slash following the quarantine. Seeing everyone and singing together at church is something we can all look forward to. Now we will continue our worship with this invitation. Don't forget to get ready for communion and then pick up your Bible or do a quick online search and read Luke chapter 15 verses 11 through 31. Pause the video now while you read and then join Reverend Michael Weeks as he brings another message in our Created for Significance worship series. All our lives, we have heard this parable called the parable of the prodigal son. We grew up hearing it in Sunday school. If today is your first time to hear about it, uh, what a blessing today is going to be to you. Let me ask you something. Have you ever used the word prodigal in a sentence? I have to confess I haven't done it very many times. And this week when I finally looked up the word prodigal in the dictionary, I discovered I've been using it wrong. Actually, according to dictionary.com, prodigal means recklessly, wasteful, an extravagant, an adjective. So the story of the prodigal son is the story of a son who was recklessly wasteful. He convinced his father to give him his inheritance early, then he squandered all that money on fast living before coming home. The only problem is, I don't think that's what this story is about at all. I don't uh, think the story is about the son. I think the story is about the father. Notice how the story begins. There was a man who had two sons. Now, who's the subject of that sentence? The man. And the objects are the two sons. This is a story of a prodigal father. It's about a father who is extravagant and recklessly wasteful with his love for his children. 
And so the question today is what can the story, the parable of the prodigal father teach us? This parable can tell us more about God than we could ever dream. This is one of the most important stories in the entire Bible because it's the story of what God is really like. If you want to know how God feels about you, if you want to know how much you are worth in God's eyes, or if you ever wondered if you had any significance in this vast universe, the story of the prodigal father is for you. For years, I read this story thinking that the son was the center of the action, and only a few weeks ago, I preached on this text during Lent, and I talked about how all the parables in Luke, and this one in particular, are explaining what the kingdom of God is like. And we talked then a little bit about the parable with me knowing that I should save some good stuff for today, so I did. When we think about this parable in the context of it explaining what the kingdom of God is like, then it reveals something very, very important. God loves those of us who are Christians, and God loves those of us who are lost. God loves everyone equally. And that's exactly uh, what we were talking about last week. But think about it. When you finally understand that the father and not the son was the extravagant one, you begin to realize that not only does this parable teach that God loves everyone, but it really reveals how deep and how wide and how significant we all are to God. I realized as I was studying again this week how much God loves each of us and how much God wants to connect with us all. Take a moment with me and think about it. The younger son asked the father to divide his property between the two brothers. He wants to have his inheritance now, and the father does. And you might think that this dad, he's just a really cool dad, or he's a dad without boundaries, or he is a dad who's just trying to help his son get started in life, and you might be right about that, but if that's all you look at, you're missing the point that Jesus was trying to make because what Jesus was actually describing here would have been scandalous to anyone who heard it in the ancient world. No one in the Middle East would ask of their father, hey, please give me my inheritance early because that would be just like asking your father to die or wishing that your father was dead. First the son, before he could get out of town with the money, he gets the inheritance and then he has to sell all the property. Can you imagine it? As Jesus is telling this story, the people are listening and they're thinking this guy would have had to go door to door and try to sell land and sell things before he could even leave town. Jesus Listeners knew that this boy had insulted his father, that this boy had shamed his father, that this boy had wished his father dead, and now he's doing the unthinkable, selling off property and possessions that had been in the family for generations. This is not a story about the son's extravagance. It's a story about how much the father loves the son. The secondary part of the story is how the son loses it all and comes home in shame to become a servant. Last week, we talked about how as the son is on the way home, the father sees him and runs to him, and running was something that would never have been done by a Middle Eastern man. The father was so filled with compassion and love that he ran to his son. And then the father calls for a rope for the son, who owns the best robe in the family? That's right, the father does. So the father loves the son so much, he gives him the clothes off his back. The ring and sandals are next. I mean, if you had the signet ring in the family in the Middle East, that meant that you were a trusted member of the family. And the sandals, but 
Servants don't wear sandals. They don't get offered sandals. And then the father wants to celebrate. So he kills the fatted calf, not the goat, the sheep, or the chicken. Why? Because the calf provides enough meat for the whole village. Do you see what the father's doing? He's inviting the whole village to share his joy. Rejoice with me, he is saying. He doesn't want the son only to be reconciled and forgiven by him, but he wants the son to be reconciled and forgiven by the whole village. He wants everyone to have a relationship with his son. This is the story no one could have anticipated. One commentator writes, for Palestinian listeners, initially the father would naturally be a symbol for God, but then as the story progresses, the father comes down out of the house and in a dramatic act demonstrates unexpected love publicly and humiliates himself. It's a rags to unbelievable riches story, only the riches aren't about money. They're about measuring your worth in God's eyes. The parable is about how significant you really are to God. I wish I had time to unpack all the good stuff about the older brother, but I don't. So I just want to dip into it so you can see what's there. You know, while the older son had not left home, you can tell from the story that he is distant and angry with his father. Jesus is saying the younger son understands and accepts that he was far off and has been found. He admits he was lost. The father comes out to him and outrageously welcomes him back into the home. The older son is also far off. And he's proud because he knows he's not really all that bad of a guy. He's mad at the father, so he refuses to come in. And the father comes out to him in just as much humiliation as he comes out to the younger son. And he talks about rejoicing and asks the son to come in. Does the son come in? Do you come in? Do you see the point of this story? The point is that the father loves all of his children so much that he is willing to suffer. The father loves you so much he's willing to be humiliated. God is willing to run out and greet you in order to bring you home. Will you come home? Will you let God love you? Will you open yourself up to a closer relationship with God? Will you acknowledge how much God loves you and respond to that love? God, if we understand this story right, it's a description of the unbelievable way you love us and your open-armed desire to have us enter your home and live with you. Some of us want to come home today Accept us and love us, O oh God. Thank you for loving us and guiding us in our time of need. And God, we pause now to pray a special prayer for those who are sick, people in this world that are suffering, people who need companionship and are feeling lonely. We ask your special divine protection on the doctors, nurses, and researchers, and all those who are working on the front lines fighting COVID-19. Guide their hands and send your blessings and love on them. We know, God, you created us for a relationship. Help us all to connect with you and one another this week. We pray now for all those who are lost, all those who need you in their lives. As we enter into this new week in quarantine, oh God, use us to invite and welcome people into this family, 
into this home of yours. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, what are you doing in your house uh, or on the job to fight the loneliness that comes with quarantine? What are you doing in your house or on the job to help fight the enemy COVID-19? What are you doing to stay connected to others or to build community or to share God's love? Are you on the phone? Are you on a Zoom conference? Are you outside looking for God sightings? Are you having a dance party? Are you playing games, making masks for others or donating food? Or are you out there working on a frontline job? I ask because I want you to text me photos or videos this week of how you are helping build God's kingdom. Make no mistake, all of the things I've suggested are ways we can share God's love in a time like this. I put instructions for sharing on the Sunday morning worship email. Send us your videos and pictures and we'll use them in an upcoming worship service or an online post. Let them be part of your offering this week. The offerings that you've been sending to us and donating online to Slash Christian Church. Uh, the youth are inviting you to participate in a food drive that's desperately needed in our community. And here is their invitation, an online video. Hey everyone, the Slash Youth Group found out this week that our planned mission trip was canceled. We're all super bummed and wanted to find a way to make an impact now. So we decided to hold a food drive for Moments of Hope, which helps out the homeless in our community like in Hanover County and Ashland. We are collecting canned foods and dry goods. The canned goods with the pop tops are the best, but anything you can give is great. We will be collecting Monday through Thursday starting May 3rd and ending May 17th. You can bring your cans to church from 9 a.m. to noon, and be sure to leave them in the plastic box by the office door. If you can't get to ch church, call us and we will send someone to pick up your donation. You can also give a monetary offering. When you send your offering in this month, add a special amount of money designated specifically to Moments of Hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Brenna, I see Brenna. Um, none of the boys are doing it. Come on. I don't know any don't TikTok dances. I don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get this. Let me get this. <laughs> there at the end there were some of our youth having a dance party in the bloopers 
beautiful. As you just heard, you can easily donate money to moments of hope if you can't get out to pick up canned goods and dry goods as you were invited to. You can do that by designated uh, an amount online to slash church or writing in the memo line and sending us a check. Thanks for all of the ways that you are sharing God's love through your monetary offerings and in all of these other ways. Let's go to God in prayer. God, it is your amazing grace which provides full life for each one of us, filled with gratitude for the ways in which you continue to seek us, sustain us, save us. Please receive this offering as a symbol of the abundant life we enjoy. Use us and use these gifts to continue spreading the good news of the gospel, especially for those who are lost. Amen.
Jesus welcomes us here and forgets the past. Sometimes we are the younger sibling, sometimes we're the elder sibling, standing on the outside. But we are all welcome here, and we are all welcome to work together and love one another. as you go out into the world today to share God's love. Go out into the world and make that love extravagant. We go to take away the loneliness people are feeling in quarantine by sharing some time with them this week, O oh God. O oh God, we go to serve. 
in our jobs, in school, on the front lines of fighting this pandemic. We go to be your hands and feet to a world in need. Amen.